Welcome to On The Chain. The Ripple case, a settlement is not enough. Ironically, the executive order increases the importance of the landmark federal court battle going on in the Southern District of New York between the SEC and enterprise blockchain software company, Ripple Labs. With all the sweeping arguments put forward by the SEC in its complaint and the scrappy, brilliant defense put up by Ripple, questions now go well beyond whether Ripple and its two senior executives violated Section 5 of the Securities Act through with the unregistered sale of XRP, the SEC's assertion of unlimited power in the absence of regulatory clarity is what's really on trial. And that, again, this is why I love this so much. The SEC's assertion of unlimited power in the absence of regulatory clarity. This we talk about here on the chain all the time. Jeff and I continue to talk about it. It's like, there's no clarity, there's no clarity. And then you have Chair Gensler. It's so clear to us. It's so very clear. Lathan goes on to say, uh, settlement isn't the right outcome in this case. It leaves the government unchastened, uh, uncontained, and free to attack again. And that's exactly right. That's why people miss how important this case is. Moreover, a class action against the SEC also needs to play out. Thousands of retail XRP holders with no connection to Ripple were needlessly harmed by the SEC's inexplicable behavior. The enforcement action filed on then SEC chairs. Jay Clayton's last day in office dealt a one two punch by crashing the value of the third largest crypto in the world, which had been trading on secondary markets since when? That's right, 2013. And then locked in up consumers' holdings when exchanges suspended XRP trading because they were fearful of any SEC reprisal. The court evidence suggests that the consumers lost as much as 15 billion. And, you know, I almost think, okay, yeah, if you go by what the amount was there, but what may have happened? We saw so many altcoins this past year, and I'm not saying 2022, I'm saying if you go back to all of 2021 and maybe the end of 2020 when this lawsuit was first filed against Ripple, how many altcoins did we see hit an all-time high, surpassed any previous all-time high? And was that in the cards for XRP? Probably. When we look at the all-time high of XRP being three dollars and eighty-four cents, was it was was it a good bet to think that it would have surpassed that? Would it inched up? I think so. So that fifteen billion becomes thirty billion potentially, becomes a uh, hundred billion dollars. These are the kind of we, we didn't take advantage of any sort of bull market or the run-ups. You look at all these other coins that were having a field day, and they were they kept surpassing the previous all-time high. Meanwhile. We haven't even been at the all-time high since 2018. I think it was January of 2018 was the last time we saw the Ripple, or the XRP hit the all-time high back before Ripple was sued in December of 2020. So there you go there. There's a little bit of that. k says it all depends on what it is. It always depends on what it is. That's fair enough. I will say that. Yeah, it always depends on what it is. But again, I don't know. I want to hear your thoughts on this. You guys digging this article? Is this spot on here? Is this, uh, here you go, right here. GDLT says if Ripple wins, everybody wins. Banks, SEC, XRP holder, no worries. Yeah, and I think that's a great, I think that's a great way to look at it, GDLT, because if you think about what the potential and the possibility of this, yeah, you've got win, 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 win all the way across the board. And where do we hold off here? Uh, others have only had their assets padlocked for over a year. Represented by at attorney John Deaton, over 65,000 of them. Wave if you're one of them. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Wave if you're one of the 65,000 of them. And this is international as well. Go ahead. Maybe you have your phone. Just wave to your phone. I can see you. Wave to your phone. Wave to your TV screen or your your. Uh, computer monitor, your laptop, your MacBook, whatever, just wait. Yeah, so look at how many people are in here right now. You got 129 people, many of which probably have done that. You're one of them, maybe the 65,000. So over 65,000 of them were granted a friend of the court status by the judge who confessed she found no judicial precedent of investors seeking to intervene in the case as defendants. Some have understandably been clamored for Ripple to settle at any cost so they can get relief. And that's the downside to this because, I mean, so many people, 
so many people sold their bags in 2021. They were just flipped out. You see, and this is the kind of thing when you start getting into overreach. You get government overreach, SEC, IRS. I don't care what what division it is, but when you get this oversight, oversight, you get a letter in the in the mail, and it's from you know the IRS. You like go to Panicville, like oh my gosh, what's this? Everybody's been there from your local taxing authority. You get something mailed to you. You get an email. And the first thing is, you know, you might think the worst. Why? Because that's what we do. We're humans. We think that. And we, and we probably know better. That's the other reason. So you have some understandably been clamoring for Ripple to settle any cost, get thing, get relief. But the SEC's capriciousness in court and the public has needlessly dragged out the case and raised the stakes for all. And that's a lot of that's on the SEC. So the chairman's conquest, the SEC 2020 complaint alleges that all distributions of the XRP token since 2013 have been unregistered as security transactions. The agency argued the token itself is a security and that its open source decentralized ledger has no other utility but as an investment contract in one company. And that's so far from the truth. And that this was evident to all. No, it wasn't because one of the things that John Deaton proved was the fact that he put out something on Twitter the other day. How many of you knew when you purchased XRP about Ripple? Most people didn't know anything about Ripple, had no idea of a connection. And since then, 2013, there's been a, a lot of different use cases. By the way, if you're watching this show right now, you have a coil subscription, you pay five or ten dollars, little tiny drops are being streamed over the time that you spend watching this. And because it's streamed, because the channel is set up to receive it, every at the conclusion of every one of these shows that either Jeff or I are on, what do we receive? You received X amount of XRP, thanks to you guys, because you have a coil subscription and you happen to be watching and it's turned on. So that's a use case. Does that have anything to do with Ripple? No. Does, does, does Ripple care about any of that? No, they don't. Does SEC know anything about it? Obviously not, because they are completely lost. It goes on to say that uh, this uh, this abruptly end, uh, departs from the Howey, the 1946 Supreme Court test for determining a security. Ripple's defense countered that the SEC gave no fair notice for seven years. In fact, Clayton and his hand-picked deputy, I'll call him his henchman, his hand-picked henchman, William Hinman, put out a blizzard of contradictory guidance to the markets. Ripple documented multiple attempts by many to get a clear answer from the SEC, but to no avail. Current SEC Chair Gensler guidance is clear. He wants to crack down on every digital asset, stable coins, utility tokens, centralized or decentralized ledgers, and he will use every weapon he's got against the industry to expand the agency's turf and lengthen his resume for promotion of the Treasury Secretary. Now, this is funny because this is early days when this whole thing was breaking. We're like, what is this guy doing? He came from, you know, is this what you do? You go to MIT, you get you get a, you get a job and you're teaching about blockchain. You're teaching about Bitcoin and digital assets. So what happens? Well, then what's your next big thing? Got $120 million. What do you care about? Power. What do you care about? Fame. Thing is, Chair Gensler is going to be very famous for losing one of the biggest court cases of this century to be famous for all the right and wrong reasons. But she nails it here when she talks about what's he really pining for? His resume enhancer. What's that look like? Looks like a promotion to the treasury secretary. Jeff called that, I believe, or I me, mean, I don't one of us said it, but there you go. It's incredible, right? So conflicts of interest. Conflicts of interest, these certainly appear to be significant with the former SEC officials. Clayton's first job after the Ripple case was filed with One Digital, One River Digital Asset Management, a crypto hedge fund that made a billion dollar bet exclusively on Bitcoin and what? Oh yeah, Ether. Shortly before the Ripple case was filed against the main market rival for those tokens at the time, which was XRP. Deaton and his army of XRP holders have asked Congress to investigate. Hinman reported receiving over 15 million in retirement payouts from Simpson Thatcher, a law firm closely aligned with Ethereum, while he made SEC policy favorable to Ether. Seems perfectly legit, right? And this is thankful to all 
the Twitter sleuths that uncovered the videos, the, the, the articles, all of the all of the data points out there. Because guess what? You put it on the internet, it's forever. You delete a tweet, it's forever. Once it hits the internet, you can always go back and find it. You pull something down, it's available so it can be found. And yeah, it's very, very sketchy at best. It's uh, not a good look, I will say that. And where uh, they, he immediately then returned to their law firm after leaving the SEC, he was signed to a billion dollar fund managed by venture capital investors and Ethereum. Settlement could close the book on these egregious actions and encourage further conflicts. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.